In fact, you see in the Tibetan Book of Living Night, there's a chapter 9 called Guru Yoga. But the word Guru Yoga may put you off a little bit. But rather what it really means, that practice is a practice of unifying with the wisdom mind of all the enlightened masters, or the enlightened beings, Buddhas, you see. There's a particular way of uh, unifying. Uh, that's a very powerful practice. In fact, in Christianity, it's like the main practice is really the divine love, very much. And it's a similar to that, which is uh, the heart of the what's called Vajrayana uh, tradition of Tibet, very much. And that, you see, the practice for the moment of death is in fact an extension of that practice, very similar. Well, the thing is that, you see, if you are, for example, a Christian, then you invoke maybe Christ, or God. Sometimes Buddhists invoke Buddha. There's a particular Buddha called Buddha Amita, Buddha of Limitless Life. <coughs> He's the Pramoji Buddha that's invoked at the moment of death. Very much. I think it's the main thing is to put it really simply is to invoke sky before you. The embodiment of all the Buddhas, all the enlightened beings, in the form of a person that if you feel, uh, you know, or else in the form of light, or else if you don't really relate to light, you know, uh, you're a little, little bit suspicious of love and light, all that, <laughs> then just just consider the presence of the enlightened beings really being with you, really invoke them in very much, you know, in the sky. And then particularly if I were to give it like a Buddhist practice in a sense, even though it can be related to all, that you invoke the Buddha, you see the, uh, the embodiment of all the Buddhas in the sky before you. And then you see very much on the behalf of the deceased or the dying. You see, you request very strongly with heartfelt prayer, so please purify <coughs> his negative karma, destructive emotions, which are the <coughs> cause of suffering which makes us go round and round in the wheel of samsaric existence. The purest purify, please purify. And when you really invoke very strongly, and sometimes in a kind of according to, uh, in the, according to tradition, there are certain prayers that are done at that moment, but then you don't have to do prayers, but you just simply invoke very strongly. And then you consider, when you make prayer very strongly, you consider from the heart of the Buddha, or Christ for that matter, tremendous rays of light, a blessing of love, compassion and wisdom that comes and it touches, you see very much, his heart, his being and then to consider that all his negative karma and destructive emotions are really purified. You can consider the Buddha when you make a very strong prayer that he's moved by a very sincere prayer and move with compassion, so send out this warm light of love and blessing. And then thereby he receives like the shower of, of blessings. And through this he is purified. And according to this great master uh, called Tingu Kensum, which he, was, he passed away, he was the teacher of, of also Dalai Lama, one of the main teachers. He often used to say that, you see, one important factor is that after this purification has effected, you consider his body being dissolved into light. Because this is significant. Why? Because this body we have is a result of past karma. So when you consider this body being purified, it's a symbolic of purifying all your past karma and karma of this life. You understand? You need to consider being purified. Purified, and the, at the end of it, having been purified, then you see your consciousness in the form of light, or otherwise that the being, his essence or his soul, whatever you like to call it, then becomes one with the Buddhas. You know? Like merging into Buddhas becomes one with the Buddha. And really, at that moment, you rest in meditation. So it's very simple. You can see from the Buddhas, tremendous way of blessing, of compassion, love and wisdom 
comes and it touches the, the deceased or the, you know, dying, because you're praying very strongly, purify all his negative karma, destructive emotions, which are the cause of suffering. And as you pray very strongly, <coughs> then you see the this light of blessing, really, as it touches, you imagine that it really purifies his, all his negative karma, destructive emotions, as a sign of this purification being effected, to consider his body, his whole being, you can consider him smiling, happy, finding peace, and it dissolves into light, it becomes a ball of light, or becomes light, and this then becomes one with the Buddhas, you know, one with the Buddhas. Very much. And that's the most important practice, really. A very simple one, which is mentioned in the Tibetan Book of Living Dying, chapter 13. And again it's mentioned uh, in chapter 19, which is how to help after death. So, uh, I think it's basically that, really, simply, to make it short. <coughs>